I ask for water cups and fill them up with soda at fast food restaurants. I probably drink 4 ounces of soda when I do this, just enough to wash down the food. If I was a heavy soda drinker I would pay for them. I spent pounds 200 on building a lie to get myself a decent acting agent. This all started when I wanted to start acting long shot I know, but I went to college and started my journey. After my first year of college all of the classes were moved from three colleges into one. Out of 120 people that passed that year, there were only space for about 50 in the new class. I wasn't one of them. I hated college, but still wanted to act, so I done what any one a actor does and signed up for an extras agency. It was slow and all of the jobs were really hard work extras don't get enough recognition I think. After about a year, I landed a small role in a very large well known film. The casting went everywhere to find what they were looking for and I was thankfully that. The experience was so different and amazing compared to being an extra, but I knew I'd need a better agent if I wanted more. About 6 months after the movie released I spent weeks emailing agents and looking for a chance, but unless you have experience, a good show reel or a masters, in acting they won't go near you. I set to work on the lie. I know a guy who's been working as a cameraman slash photographer for a while now, and he does great work, so we spoke and agreed a price of pounds 200 for me to have him come out for 8 hours with me and edit everything together. We wrote 6 short scenes only lasting about 2 minutes each, brought along multiple costume changes, and I drove us to different locations to shoot each one. Once we finished we went our separate ways, and about a week later he sent me the edited version. We got it down to 4 short scenes, one of which was real, and from the movie I was in, and the rest were completely fabricated. With my fake show reel and fake movie names I sent it to 3 different agencies. I already had a full description of what the movies were about and why none of them could be found online, stuff like it's still in production and are using a different name for anonymity and the budget ran out and are waiting on funds to continue the shoot. This landed me a half decent agent and since being with her, I have had auditions for huge films and have made a lot of money for the roles I got. This started about 1.5 years ago and she has never asked me about those fake movies. I discreetly service other men's wives. Melbourne, Australia weirdly it's the only kink I have and have had for as long as I can remember. I own my own business and can be available whenever during the day. I'm married and have not even revealed this side of me to a living soul. I started smoking because of vaping. Despite it being the one thing my parents wouldn't allow me to do my whole life my parents told me I could do as I please, but if I started smoking cigarettes they would kick me out. I had the chillest parents growing up. Open conversations about sex, drugs, alcohol. I never had to hide anything. The one thing they made very clear to me was how upset they'd be if I started smoking cigarettes. Both my parents started at 12, and while my dad still smokes, my mom quit 12 years ago and often talks about how it's a daily struggle. I started vaping at 20, and at 21 I started smoking cigarettes. I was out of vape juice one night in a different town, and couldn't get any, so I bought a pack. They were gross at first. I also kind of felt cool when I smoked. I started only smoking, because I thought vaping was giving me acne. My reasoning was that I thought I vaped too much and I would smoke way less at work and at home since I lived with my grandparents. I started going on 2 hours drives, chain smoking the whole way, sneaking smokes at work. Then I did a combo, vaping all day but also going out for smokes. I smoke in my car. While living with my grandparents I tried everything to keep them out of my car. It was a great source of stress for me as they always wanted rides, or to borrow it, and I had to either clean the entire thing out, or make up excuses. I always ate fun of people who started smoking at the age of 21. I can quote myself saying at the age of 21 you already know how bad it is, if you start smoking you are either stupid, or think you are cool. Now I'm the day with a lifelong addiction. To anyone who vapes or smokes now at a young age, stop. 
it sounds so stupid to you, and you won't listen, but $20 every few days for a pack or some pods really adds up, and I can assure you I feel 10x worse than before. I badmouthed a teacher in writing, and consequently got another student suspended in the process this was years ago in 5th grade. I was a pretty naughty kid in class, there were times where I would get kicked out of the classroom for a few minutes as a form of disciplinary action for my behavior. Nothing serious, I was just a generally noisy and annoying student at the most. There was one student in 6th grade that was in butthole to my friend and things about him being a bully were being said among the 5th and 6th grade students on our school. Lane one of the times I got sent out of the classroom, I got the idea to try to get back on the teacher who sent me out, but in a way that it wouldn't be known as me. At least, that was what I intended. So I wrote something on the school bathroom wall badmouthing him saying something like son of a female dog teacher. As classes ended that day eventually somebody was bound to find it, and some students did. Upon being told about it, the particular teacher looked into it himself to find out who did that to him. Based on the handwriting, which I changed drastically to avoid attention, his suspicions geared towards some of the troublesome 6th graders. I watched them defend themselves, got taken to the principal's office, and last I heard the particular 6th grader I mentioned was the one who got blamed, and he wasn't allowed to enroll in that school for the following school year. I didn't really intend for that particular bully to be suspended, but it did. I didn't come forward on the matter, because it was immediately settled, and I was too much of a coward to do so. Every time I think about it, I still feel guilty. Revenge is something that I gotta admit I've always been wanting to be onto. I've been bullied at it as well. Up until today I've always tried to be the bigger person and not give in to my desire for it, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's not easy. Even with guilt driving me to be better, it's still pretty difficult. That's my first confession. I'm bored and lockdown situations are starting to get to me I guess, and I just want someone else to talk to aside from my friends. Thanks for reading, and pardon my English. Not my native language. I broke into and stole items from a baseball field concession stand in my town as kids. My friends and I would run the countryside. Living in a rural part of the US this was normal. As we got older we started getting more mischievous. Sneaking out at night. Things like that. There's a baseball diamond that we all play t-ball and baseball at up to around 4th grade. They still use it to this day updating things every now and then. So one night, about 13 years ago, we snuck out and found ourselves at the field. The concession stand had those big roll up doors that lock from the inside. It's just a latch that goes through a piece of metal to stop someone from opening it up. We realized we could lift the door up a few inches and touch that latch. We quickly found a rope and made a loop. Hooked it to the latch and boom, we were in. I only stole some candy and one time $20. I couldn't believe they left everything there. I only took $20 because I felt if I took more I'd feel more guilty or something. I don't really feel bad about it, I was just a bored kid being a hoodlum. One of the times my buddy and I jumped inside and closed the roll down window. When we decided to leave we opened it back up and saw headlights of a parked car. We were on the opposite side of the building, so the person couldn't see us. We hopped out, and as I was lowering the window, the lights flipped on. I started to open it back up to say hey, WTF. Let's go. But it was the person who pulled up. An older man said how in the flip did they get in here? I lowered the window a bit more, unsure how he didn't notice or hear us, and we ran through the gravel into a nearby field. We laid prone till the man left. We were never caught. TL. Doctor broke into my childhood baseball field concession stand and took some items. I faked an injury when I was a college soccer player, so I could stay home man. I faked a hamstring injury when I was in college, so I could stay home from a two game road trip and have sex with the assistant coach's then girlfriend now his wife. I actually did the same twice, once again later in the season. With about 2 minutes left in a game against Hofstra, I pulled up Lame and grabbed my hamstring. 
That was a Tuesday game. On Thursday we were leaving to play at James Madison and Dunk Wilmington Saturday and Sunday, so I didn't go on the road trip and stayed home to get treatment, so I would be ready for the following week's games. Both of those teams were near last place in the conference, and I thought it wouldn't matter if I didn't go. We won one game and lost one game as it turned out. Anyway, it was all part of a plan to stay home and bang the assistant coach's girlfriend. I was 20, she was 30, so it was kind of a big deal to be nailing an older woman like that. We first met at our school's summer soccer camp back in July and August, and we flirted a little bit, and then at a Labor Day cookout she slipped me a note during the night and things went on from there. We chatted on kick to set things up and it just evolved into that scheme to fake an injury. So I got the hamstring injury and missed those two road games and we did the dirty 4-4 straight days and even more weird, we watched the live stream of the games on her home computer. I did the same thing again later in the season, when we were playing William and Mary in a game that didn't really matter. We were already in the playoffs by then. So I told the coach I felt something in my hamstring again. And he let me stay home, and I spent the next two days torching the assistant's girlfriend again. He moved on to take the head coach job at a bigger school and they're married now. I stole $100 from my works charity at my old job I was given the role of treasurer for the company's charity. They prided themselves on employees volunteering every year to raise money. Millions was typically raised through events and direct donations. Although I wasn't interested I was voluntold. The amount of work was insane, and I was reprimanded for slacking in my actual job while trying to keep up with the charity. So I was pretty miserable. One specific part of my job was to collect and reconcile funds from events. These events were organized by other employee volunteers. We had different locations all over so there would be tons of events. We had a rule that all funds collected had to be converted to a bank draft. I would then give the bank draft to an admin for depositing. One specific volunteer was responsible for events at our corporate headquarters. So the events were pretty big. He was last to provide funds. He showed up at my desk with $2,000 collected, $1,500 in small bills and $500 in coins. I tried to get him to bring them to the bank for a bank draft but he refused. The cash sat in my lock drawer for about 4 weeks before I got it deposited. I just procrastinated since I was busy with other work. I ended up taking about $100 in total for personal things. I took a few 20s a couple times for lunch. Couple times I needed bus fare. One time I was low on gas and needed cash. It was easy to hide as no one reconciled deposited cash to collect it. The lack of bank draft made it easy to change one number by $100. Looking back I don't feel very guilty. I worked late nights and long hours on that charity and didn't get paid any overtime. I was treated like crap in that company and was refused raises multiple times. I feel like $100 ice and begin the grand scheme when millions are being raised. I won a random drawing. But I also kind of didn't years back I was working as a waitress at a dinner in a pretty small town. The town was kinda tourist why and had lots of little shops and restaurants on the main street and once a year they would do this promotion with a lot of small businesses in town spend $10 in one of these stores and earn a raffle ticket each ticket you pretty much just write your name and phone number then put it in a box at the place you spent the money. End of the month they pull out a few names and people get a gift card to use at one of the places. Every shift I worked that whole month I would put a few raffle tickets with my name in the box. They were literally just printed out on regular paper and we had to cut them so it wasn't hard to just keep a stack in my pocket and slip them in the box when the dining room was slow. I ended up big surprise winning and got $50 in gift cards. I lost my geometry template in 5th grade and forged a new one in 5th grade we got these template to draw shapes for geometry. Like a plastic sheet with various shapes of varying sizes. When they handed them out, the teachers made a big deal about how they were our responsibility and if we lost them, we had to get our parents to pay for it. The templates were like $20, so that felt like a big responsibility back then. 
each of them were numbered, and they took down our names so there was no getting out of losing it. Being the well behaved student that I was I had no worries about keeping track of my template. This will be easy I thought. But one day temptation got to me. I was playing around tossing my template in the air when suddenly, it falls down the heating vent, these little slaps by the windowsill. In a second it was gone. My little goody two shoes fifth grade brain could not comprehend what had just happened. I'm petrified about getting caught. I had to make this right. The next day, when we need our templates I told the teacher I left mine at home and asked to borrow one for the day. So she gives me a crisp new template and tells me to bring it back to her desk at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, I didn't bring it back. I took it home and used it for the rest of the year as my own. And when the end of the year old around I wrote my number on my new template, it black ink instead of blue she couldn't notice right. Turned it in, and bam no one ever figured it out. It was worth it I regret nothing. I lied to my employer about having a master's degree one of the worst lies I made in my life tbh. And it wasn't even a requirement for my job, and I didn't even do it to get hired. I was already working at my job at that time as a lowly intern with my bachelor's degree trying to make my way up the ranks. I started coming in late to work a bit because I moved far away from the job, so I made up an excuse that I was trying to go back to school to get a higher education degree at that time. I was already an excellent employee and probably would have gotten a full time role pretty soon if I didn't lie. Well that lie cost me an extra 2 years as being an intern and after a certain point I just had to assume that I had a degree. Now everyone assumes I got a degree that I don't. That was 5 years ago now and I started working 7, 8 years ago for this company. Nothing was gained out of this lie as the position I am in does not require this degree and my boss didn't even know until I told him. I'm still getting paid pretty much the equivalent of mid-range bachelor degree holder as a master's really doesn't make any difference. It was a blatant lie out of a lack of courage without really any intent to defraud the company get a job I didn't really qualify for. I regret doing it and at this point I'm kinda stuck with it. I probably should just look for new positions and let it go. I used to tear the wings of a fireflies and then see if they tried to fly my mom said it was cruel, so I stopped. Coming clean about forgetting to do my physics homework in high school I will preface this story by stating that I had a reputation in high school of being smart and a hard worker. Truth be told, I was blessed with smarts that made it seem like I worked harder than I actually did. High school was very easy for me, and I didn't have to really try to get A's. College was a rough eye opener for me that first quarter though. Haha. <laughs> Had to learn how to study and be a good student. In no way am I stating these points to brag, just setting the stage for my confession. There was one day in high school during basketball season where I forgot to complete a homework assignment in my physics class. I had a friend in the class who was also on the basketball team who had completed his homework like he was supposed to. He didn't quite have the same reputation as I did, but he was a pretty smart kid. In the moments before class started, I remembered that I forgot to do the assignment and asked to copy his. He handed me his assignment and I feverishly copied everything down word for word, assuming he knew what he was doing. At that point, I didn't have a lot of options. I barely got it done before the teacher asked for everyone to turn them in. The next day we got the graded assignments back. I saw my friend's grade of an 80% on the assignment when the teacher was handing them out. I obviously expected the same for me, but when I got my assignment back, I had been given a 90%. I quickly filed my assignment away so my friend wouldn't see it and cause a big fuss that would get me in trouble with the teacher. To this day I still haven't shared the story with my friend. Maybe I'll tell him at the 20 year class reunion. I've been drinking and driving for 10 years. Even after everything. Never. Ever had to face consequences. Never had a single problem. Even when I worked at the top of a mountain. A 5k foot climb every morning. Not just driving while drunk. I'm talking. Driving drunk while drinking. 
Only time I ever got pulled over in the past 8 years was for jot wearing a seatbelts. Gym bag full of empties. Aluminum drink cup full of Mike's hard lemonade. He didn't suspect a thing. I flung a baby carrot at a woman's face, and nobody knew it was me. It was sophomore year of high school. It was the first day back after Christmas break, and all of my lunch table friends were still on their vacations. So there, alone, I sat. I had a pack of baby carrots, and I wasn't exactly going to eat them. And I noticed they had a lot of moisture. I squeezed one as hard as I could toward its end, and it flew up about a foot, and landed on the table. Interesting. There was a trash can about 20 feet from me, and I figured I'd try to aim my carrot hand cannon at it, and see if I could make any baskets. One carrot, two carrots, three carrots, no dice. Fourth carrot is locked and loaded, but I got ahead of myself, and it flung at 500 miles per hour backward. Ooh, I hear a girl scream. I turn around, and as it turns out, my carrot hit her in the face. Her face in her hands, like she was holding back tears. Who the flip threw that? Her 8 FD 400 pounds Linebacker boyfriend boomed. I cowered in my seat, kept my head low. But then I realized that I would look more suspicious that way, so I turned around and acted shocked like everyone else. I chucked a baby carrot at this girl's face and acted like nothing happened. I unbeknownst to everyone else became the mystery carrot flinger that year. Like and subscribe for more videos.